everyone and welcome back to That Was History. We've got your seven historical stories from May 11th through 17th coming up, so be sure to stay tuned for all of this great content. Let's get started, guys. Whoa, wait a minute, let me ask you a question. Okay. Chess or checkers? Well, I like checkers. Why not chess? I mean, there's so much more involved with the strategy, you just gotta sit there and think about your move. Yeah, but I've been playing checkers for a long time, and it's simple and it's easy to play, none of that complex stuff that you're talking about. So, can we get started, please? I guess so, but I bet you can't guess what the first story's about. Well, yes, I know, but guess what, guys? You get to wait and find out. So when you're little, you start out by learning how to play checkers. It's simple. You jump over your opponents to take their pieces, and you try to take all of theirs before they take yours. Well, once you get older, you might actually venture into the realm of chess. It's more complicated, and all the pieces have different certain patterns that they have to follow. While I consider myself to be an average, mediocre chess player, I can win if I take my time and really think about my moves. But you know one thing that I can always seem to beat is that computer, because it has much more of a capacity to calculate risk and move responses into response to how you move. However, I don't feel so bad, because even the best world champion chess player can be beat by a computer. This in fact happened on May 11th of 1997 by IBM Sadiq Blue, who would defeat Garry Kasparov in a six game matchup in New York. So even if you think you're smart and have the confidence to take on a world-class computer at a chess match, you better be careful because you could end up like this guy and come out on the losing side. Throughout history, the firstborn son has typically been a prized possession among royal families. This son is considered to be the reigning king or queen's will and way in guiding their people after the current ruler passes on. With this comes resentment from younger siblings who would much rather have the title of ruler for themselves. Prince Albert of England was not quite this way, however. He was second to the throne beneath his brother Edward, who was to take the seat of king after their father, King George V, died. As history has told, Prince Edward had different plans in mind. Instead of becoming king, he decided to marry his mistress, Wallace Simpson. This marriage would forfeit his right to become king, and due to this, Prince Albert would become king and his coronation ceremony was held on May 12th of 1937. He would change his name to King George VI and marry the most beloved Queen Elizabeth, who lived all the way up until 2002. During the First World War, the Netherlands would remain a neutral ground, not taking sides with either the Allies or the Central Power. Upon the beginning of the Second World War, they would hope to do the same and not get involved because they had not exploited their resources on improving their army. If they were to resist any invasion, they would have to have upgraded their militia. Well, Germany would invade them and soon take over the entire state. During this, Queen Wilhelmina would escape, though, and arrive safely on May 19th of 1940 in England as a refugee. She was known for being the longest reigning queen of 58 years who saw two world wars and other major events of the time. She was very influential and helped to maintain this neutral ground on which they succeeded in the First World War, but were invaded nonetheless in the second. If for nothing else, history is the best resource for observing how governments, countries, and cultures have changed over many years. You can follow the rise of the Roman Empire, see the changes that war brought into the countries involved in the world wars, and even use history as a reference point for when different ideas, theologies, and practices began and ended. May 14th of 1948 is just another one of those dates where the world was forever changed. This date is the marker for when British rule in the Palestine area officially came to an end and the independent state of Israel was proclaimed. An interesting note is that it took Israel 2,000 years to gain nationhood status. Obviously, they have remained an independent state ever since. Today in our militia, machine guns are just a way of life. It's a common choice when going into a battle. It puts out dozens of rounds per minute. Well, as you all know, someone had to start it off with invention to get the ball rolling. The first ever thought of machine gun would come with James Puckle's first ever patent on a machine gun on May 15th of 1718. It was a single barrel tripod construction with a barrel that was 3 feet long, a bore of 1.25 inches, and a preloaded cylinder which held 11 charges and could fire 63 shots in 7 minutes. Now at this time era, if you think about it, a soldier could only fire 3 bullets per minute having to pack in gunpowder in the bullet. This gun, however, did not make it to mass production as gunsmiths were not able to make the complicated parts for it fast enough. After this patent, though, there were more to come, and thus today we have many machine guns of different brands and very many variances. 
This next event will probably hit home with our married viewers the most, but I'm sure you will all get a kick out of this one. There comes a time in most people's lives where they meet that special someone and decide that they want to settle down and marry their significant other. The wedding can be as simple as going down to the local courthouse and filling out the required documentation, or it can be as expensive and glorious as the bridezilla requires. Weddings can be very unique, but there are elements that are typically the same. On May 16th of 2010, however, a Japanese couple decided to heck with the old ways of doing things, we want a robot. The bride and groom had a connection to the robot's industry and requested that the robot known as the Eye Fairy officiate their wedding in Tokyo, making them the very first couple ever to be married by a robot. In 1959, Castro was a leftist who wanted to strengthen his ties with the Soviet Union instead of being allies with the United States, and he would take over as president of Cuba. The previous president, Batista, was an ally with the United States and had been through the Cuban Revolution. In efforts to overthrow Castro as president, the invasion of the Bay of Pigs would take place. Though the United States had airstrikes to help them out and the gunpowder to take control, the Cubans had the morale behind them to defend their homeland and the numbers to back them up. This would soon come to an end and the invaders would surrender. They were taken prisoner and questioned, some even on live broadcast. In an effort to negotiate with the United States on the invaders' freedom, on the 17th of May of 1961, he requested 500 tractors and bulldozers in return. Now, the United States would not comply with this specific order, but they would, however, eventually end the negotiation by paying $52 million worth of food and medicine. This was a big defeat for America and showed the world that there was fallibility in their foreign efforts. Kennedy, who was president at the time, was embarrassed by Cuba and Castro and would force the Soviets to make the first move over putting their strategic missiles in Cuba at the time. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for this episode. We hope that you enjoyed all the great content that we had in there for you. Be sure to come back next Friday and check us out. And also, please keep sending your funny ideas so that we can put them in our episode and you'll get to see those and everybody will get to enjoy them. Also, tell your friends and family about us. We are trying to reach the 1,000 subscribers mark and we can't do it without you guys. So please follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and you can find those links right here below. And also hit that subscribe button so that way you get all the weekly updates that we have every Friday. We'll see you next time, guys.